The reason we practice is so that we can gain insight, the kind of insight that liberates the mind. It's defined in the, in the text in different ways. In some cases, it's defined in terms of the Four Noble Truths. Seeing what you're doing that's causing suffering, seeing what suffering is, and seeing what you can do to put an end to that suffering. In other cases, it's defined in terms of fabrication, sankara, the way the mind puts things together. In both cases, it's focused on what you're doing. The purpose of the meditation is to make you sensitive to what you're doing, to see how you are creating suffering where you didn't realize it. In some cases, you don't realize it's suffering. You just accept it as the normal way of experience. In some cases, you don't realize that you're doing anything. So ideally, the meditation should make you sensitive to both aspects there. And one of the ways it does this is to focus you first on the body. As John Mann once said, there's no gaining insight without practicing a mindfulness immersed in the body. One of the ways you can immerse it is like what we're doing right now, focusing on the breath. First you start out with noticing when the breath is coming in, when it's going out, and then noticing where you feel the breathing in the body. Because breath here is not the air coming in and out through the nose. That's the result of breath, the actual breath itself. The Buddha defines as one of the aspects of the wind element in the body itself, the movement and energy. Where do you feel that movement? Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Get sensitive to where you are sensitive to the breathing. And ask yourself if it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. That's one of the nice things about the breath, is you can manipulate it in all kinds of ways. And the fact that you can manipulate it makes you more and more sensitive to the fact that the way you breathe has an intentional element. It tends to go on automatic pilot. We think it happens on its own. But there is a part of the mind that's keeping track of the breath. And it adjusts things. And the best way to get sensitive in that part of the mind is to consciously adjust things. This is a repeated pattern throughout the practice. If you think you're simply watching things as they're happening on their own, you're missing the whole process of fabrication. You're just seeing the results that things come and things go. But you don't see the origination. And the origination is something you do that's giving rise to these things. That's what you want to see. We focus on the body, because it's one of the areas where the mind plays a big role in shaping your experience. Say with feelings. Little pains come and go. Pleasure. Pleasurable feelings come and go. Neutral feelings come and go. And you could say they just come and go on their own. But in the Buddha's analysis, there's an element of fabrication in them. There are certain things we focus on, other things we don't focus on. You can choose to focus on your pains, make yourself miserable. You can choose to focus on the more pleasurable experiences. And in that choice, you play a big role in shaping the rest of your experience. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha said, practice of the four jhanas is a necessary part of the practice. Because it involves getting sensitive to the feelings that you create. You create a sense of ease and well-being. You allow that sense of ease and well-being to spread through the body. You get more and more conscious of your intentional element in creating these feelings, emphasizing them, amplifying them, or turning them down. You start with certain raw materials come in from your past karma, but then you manipulate them quite a lot. 
in a practice in jhana, you see clearly that, yes, you can manipulate these things. These are called, called pleasures, not of the flesh, or feelings of equanimity, not of the flesh. They don't just come and go on their own. You begin to see that they have a lot to do with where you pay attention, what your intentions are, and in focusing on the body. And your perceptions. You can perceive a little tiny feeling as a potential major pain, and you can turn it into a major pain. We're really good at that. But learn to be good at the other side. Learn how to take the little potentials for pleasure and turn them into something big. The whole point of this is to get yourself sensitive to what you're doing in the present moment. When the Buddha describes dependent core rising, a lot of the factors come prior to sensory contact. And they're the ones that are going to determine whether that sensory contact is going to be leading to pleasure or leading to pain. So you want to get sensitive to this part of your awareness. And it's by focusing on the body that you do that. The Buddha does note that there are states of concentration, there are ways of getting into the formless jhanas that bypass the body. You get a sense of light, a sense of forms that you see, making it very beautiful. They blot out your experience of the body, and you can go straight from there into the formless states. And there are passages where the Buddha talks about how to use these bodiless experiences as ways of perfecting your subtlety of concentration and your subtlety of observing the mind. But even in cases like that, he ends up by saying, well, you go back, you give rise to the jhanas. Because you want to see this process of fabrication, and the Buddha defines the jhanas defines them in terms of the feeling tone. You want to see how that feeling tone is a process or product of your, your fabrication. He also wants you to see the other fabrications that are going on, what he calls verbal fabrication, direct to thought and evaluation. You learn to see when you're concentrated and you're talking to yourself about the concentration, as opposed to when you're concentrated and you are not talking to yourself about it. You're simply holding on to a perception. That too is something you want you to watch. What are the perceptions you hold on to? Because those lie at the heart of the concentration. And this is all clearest as you're going through the jhanas, and it's related to the body. Because otherwise the mind can float away, and it can gain some insights. But even focusing on your awareness in and of itself, it's very easy to think, well, things just come and they go. I know some people who focus just on awareness and they think that they have no free will at all because they see so many unbidden thoughts coming into the mind. But that's covering up the whole purpose of the meditation, which is to see what are you doing this shaping your experience, and how are you shaping it in a way that's causing stress and pain? Because after all, we want happiness, but we have these habits that get in the way, and you want to see those, and they're best seen with reference to the body. And John Munn once said that there's no gaining insight without practicing mindfulness immersed in the body. And there are lots of different practices that do that. Some of them focus on the unattractive side of the body, like the chant we have with the thirty-two parts. Others focus on the, on the elements, or the properties of the body. And those can be used to develop a friendship with your body. And John Lee talks a lot about this. You've got the breath, which is part of the wind element. You've got feelings of warmth in the body, which are part of the fire element. Feelings of coolness, which are related to liquid element, and then solid feelings related to the earth element. 
And if you pay attention to these, you realize that you can emphasize them. When it's cold outside, you can think about the warmth in the body. When it's hot outside, you can focus on the cooler sensations. In the same way that we focus on a sense of ease with the breath and then let that spread through the body. You can let warm sensations spread through the body, cool sensations spread through the body. When you're feeling lightheaded, you can think about earth. When you're feeling dull and heavy, think about the breath. There's a lot to manipulate here. And as John Lee said, it's like becoming a friend of the body. You ask questions, and at first the body doesn't respond. But you keep on asking questions. How about warmer? How about cooler? Where are the warm spots in the body? Where are the cool spots in the body? And you find that the body responds. This too shows you how your perceptions play a huge role in how you experience the body. And then you can take that insight, then you can apply it to the mind. So don't be in too great of a hurry to leave the body, because, as I said, even those states of concentration can get very stable and very solid that are not based on the body. Even in cases like that, the Buddha recommends you go back and go through the jhanas to make sure that you really are clear about the process of fabrication. That involves being focused on the body. Same with the Brahma Viharas. It is possible to get into strong states of concentration with, in the Brahma Viharas, but the Buddha has you turn around and go back. Look at the process of fabrication. The feelings you, you get, where are you going to feel the feelings? They're not just mental feelings, they're physical feelings as well. And you see the role that you play in them. That's how insight comes. You don't get insight by running away from the big thing that you're fashioning all the time, which is your sense of the body. You use it to eat, you use it to lie down, you use it to walk, you use it to do all kinds of things. You're not going to get free of it until you understand it. And you're not going to understand it unless you spend time with it. This is why when the Buddha defines how you practice the four frames of reference and the process of establishing mindfulness, always tells you to keep it anchored in the body. Even when you focus on feelings, well, where do the feelings come from? They come from the way you pay attention to the way you breathe. You focus on the mind. What do you want to see with the mind? You want to see it being mindful and alert to the breath. And you want to see the qualities that can be developed, qualities that can be abandoned as you stay with the breath and put aside other things. So even though you're not focused on the body as your main point of interest, you have to be anchored in the breath. You have to be anchored in the body to make sure you don't go running off into the past or the future. And so that you can see while you're here in the present moment that, yes, you are complicit in the way you cause suffering. It's not something that's visited on you. It's not something that just comes floating by. You're creating suffering through your lack of skill and how you relate to something as basic as the body, your main tool here. So straighten this out. And of course, it's straightening out your relationship to the body. You're going to be straightening out your mind. So when time comes to look more carefully at the mind itself, you'll be looking at a mind state that's a lot easier to look at. It's a lot easier to watch the mind when it's being skillful than when it's being unskillful. When you get used to seeing it skillful, then the slightest unskillful things come up. One, you detect them. And two, you don't take them as proof again and again and again that you are basically unskillful, because you know you've got some skills. So this is where they're developed. This is where the insight comes. So settle in here. 
get sensitive to what's going on here. It's only by staying here that you can see the mind in action. And only then can you gain the kind of insight that really is liberating. <laughs>